What's up YouTube? Welcome back. It's Ramsey, also known as Fostering Single. I'm about to answer 30 of your top frequently most asked questions about fostering as a single person right now. I'm going to hopefully uh, give you some answers about what it's like to be a single foster parent. Alright, let's get started. Why did you become a single foster parent? I became a single foster parent because I am adopted. I grew up with foster siblings. My parents were foster parents. I saw both the successes of the system and the failures. I knew I wanted to help um, and get involved and so I decided that I want to become a single foster parent. I was really excited about reunification. I wanted to see families and kids get the help that they need. Was your adoption traumatic for you? It wasn't traumatic for me, but I do know it is traumatic for others. And after listening to a lot of other adoptees, that's something that I wanted to be able to help and bring into this space. Is it hard to become a foster parent? I get this question all the time. It's not difficult to be licensed as a foster parent. It is time consuming, but it is hard to be a foster parent. It is very difficult job. So what was the process to get licensed like? The process to get licensed is, like I said, pretty easy. It's just time consuming. It consists of a background check, of trainings, of homework, checking your home, doing interviews, stuff like that. It's not as scary as everybody makes it seem, uh, but it does take your time and effort. So how long did it take you to get licensed? It took me three months. Remember, all of these answers are based off of where I live. I live in the state of Arkansas, my personal experience. So not everybody's going to be the same. It took me three months. It takes a lot of people almost a year to get licensed. What are the requirements to be a foster parent? You have to have a clean background check. You have to be able to uh, provide for yourself. You need to be able to have enough space for your kiddos to be, you know, mentally sound, physically sound, all of those things, as well as a few others. All the requirements vary by state, so just check with your state whenever you're trying to figure out what your requirements might be. Do you need to be married? Obviously not. This channel is called Fostering Single. Do you need to own a home? No, you do not need to own a home. You can rent depending on your state law. Each room needs to have a certain amount of space per child. And so just check your state on that one. Do you need to make a certain amount of money? No, you don't have to make a certain amount of money. You just need to be able to take care of yourself, take care of your bills, and take care of kiddos if you need to. What about my pets? We have a big dog. She's a German Shepherd. Our pet has never been an issue in the licensing process. Our pet is not aggressive, but it is considered an aggressive breed, and yet we still foster. So as long as your kiddos are okay with your pets, as long as your pets are safe, you should be good to go. What if I'm a parent to bio kids already? Okay, if you have your own biological children, you can still foster. I would just make sure that your family is all on board with fostering. That includes your kids. Are you allowed to work full time? Yes, I work full time. I've been working at my job for almost six years. Because my job is a little bit of a juggle some days, but we definitely make it work. Did your job or your boss support you? Yes, my job and my boss were very supportive. They're still very supportive of my journey. If you don't have a supportive boss or a supportive job, it is going to be really difficult to get some of this stuff done. So I would definitely take that into consideration if you're thinking about fostering. How do you do it with your work schedule as a single mom? I also have a crazy work schedule for somebody who's working full time and parenting. That's why I made a preference that I wanted kids that were school age uh, so that they would be able to work with my schedule a little bit better. They'd be in school during the day and then they'd also enjoy coming uh, to sports with me in the evening. I do sports medicine as a full time job. I've been doing that for a really long time and so I wanted to be able to have kids that were at an age where they would enjoy being at my job, enjoy hanging out with my students, and they love it. So speaking of the age preference, can you set preferences for kids coming into your home? Yes, you can. You can preference everything from age, race, gender, and a whole lot of other things too. I didn't personally have any preferences. Yes, you can make preferences. That doesn't mean the state won't ask you outside of your preferences. They probably will ask you just because they need the help. How much do you get paid? People love this question, how much do I get paid? Well, first of all, let me tell you, I'm not getting really paid anything. Our monthly board payments are a form of reimbursement for how much we are paying to take care of our kids. Here in Arkansas, my monthly stipend per child is $440 for the month after the month is over that I've already paid for all of their things. $440, I don't know if that sounds a lot to you. It does not go a long way in our home. My kids could eat 
four hundred and forty dollars uh, worth of food a piece a month probably. I'm very transparent about all of our financial stuff. They do also pay for Medicaid through the state so all of their health insurance and everything is free. Mental health services as well are also taken care of and so uh, yeah those are all the financial benefits that come with fostering. And those benefits are for the child not for the parent. What are the biggest challenges that you faced in doing this as a single foster parent. Obviously there's only one of me, there's one set of hands. The biggest challenge for me is definitely the schedule, definitely getting on a routine. As a single person before I was very selfish. It was a big adjustment for me for my life to start completely revolving around other people. A good adjustment but a hard adjustment to say the least. My schedule, my time, my home, everything looks completely different. There have been a lot of challenges where I wish I would have had a few more hands. But on that note, do you wish you would have waited until you had a partner to start fostering? No. No! I don't necessarily wish I would have waited. Um, I do think that having a really solid partner would definitely help me in some ways. But I also think if I would have just settled and gotten married simply because I wanted to start a family that um, it might be a little bit more trouble than it's worth. I can definitely wait until I find a partner who's going to be on this mission with me and going to be all in for me and these kids. Until that happens, we're going to be fostering single. Am I dating anyone now? I'm not dating anyone now. Um, um, I'm still currently single. What did your family think? I told my family I wanted to do this. Of course, they had a few reservations. Who wouldn't have a few questions? They know just how hard this could be. And so they definitely had some reservations. Uh, but overall, they were very supportive. Did your friends support you in this? Uh, some of them did, some of them didn't. Some are coming around and some have completely fallen off the face of the earth. I think if something has changed the most during this experience, it has been my friendships. I think that sometimes people thought this was going to be like really fun and it is really fun but it's also really hard. Thank you to the friends who have stuck with me through the hard times. Seriously, you're one in a million and I so appreciate you. My church was also very supportive of me, especially doing this single. I've had some backlash from the rest of the Christian community and I just have to say my church was on board with me and still is on board with me 100%. Can you have babysitters? In the state of Arkansas, I can have anybody babysit up to eight hours at a time um, as long as I deem them safe. There are also resources like foster family support systems and respite care and those people can help me do overnight things. They have to go through some training. Some of those people are licensed and so I utilize that as well. I don't do babysitters very often. I don't do respite care very often. My kids come with me almost everywhere I go but yes you can have babysitters. That may differ in your state just depending. How long have you had your current kids? My foster daughter came to me almost two years ago um, and I have had her ever since. She came to me from another foster home and then a year later we were able to get her biological brother and almost to the day of this video releasing he has almost been here for an entire year. Two years in all I've been working on this case. It feels like I've had them forever and just a minute all at the same time. What do my foster kids call me? I told them at the beginning they could call me whatever they want as long as it's respectful. Call me by my first name, Ramsey. They can call me mom. They can call me their foster mom, the girl I live with. They just can't call me old, boring, or a trash basketball player or we're going to have some problems. Luckily, we haven't done that, but they do call me mom. My foster daughter has been calling me mommy almost since day one. Little brother just kind of hopped on the train when he got here. Are you going to adopt them? Yes, we are adopting. Wait, but I thought you said you were pro-reunification and bio family. What happened? It is not for me to share my kid's story on the internet. I will let them share their story in time, but just know we worked really hard towards reunification for over two years. Came to a point where the court deemed that we would not work towards reunification anymore. It just worked out the way that it did. I'm still very pro-bio family. We will continue to try to keep contact where we can and where it's safe. Just know I'm still very pro-reunification. That is just not how it worked out in our case this time for its own reasons. And if my kids want to share those reasons later, they can do that on their own social media channels. So we've been waiting forever. When is your adoption date? I still don't know. Hopefully very, very soon I should be hearing from the court any day now and I'll be sure to give you an update. Are you going to keep fostering after adoption? We may continue to keep open for respite care or emergency care, but we will not be a full-time foster home anymore. You may be thinking, what's coming next then? I would love to tell you, but you'll have to stick around because I'm going to be telling you in another video. The last question. I'm not ready to open my home to full-time foster care. 
How can I still help? There are direct ways to help through state and local agencies. You can volunteer your time, your money, your resources. Also become something like a CASA. CASA is a volunteer who gets a caseload and is able to work on those cases and be an advocate for those children outside of the state or being a foster parent. They are like an unbiased opinion in the court that gets to speak on the case. Super valuable. If you're in the state of Arkansas, I will be linking some resources, some ways to volunteer, and some ways to help under this video, so check it out. I think that's all the questions we have for today. If you have any more, you can comment them below and I hope to answer them. This video helped you learn a little bit. Thank you for being here and I'll catch you next time. Bye!